This Tory Talk seminar, originally presented in October 2020, was given by Simon Verlind. After working in horticulture, Simon earned a bachelor's degree in biology and a master's in tropical botany. He worked as a contractor for the Missouri Botanical Garden, identifying thousands of orchid specimens and assisting in the development of a living collection in Madagascar. He is now a PhD student at NYBG with Greg Plunkett and Tariq Stavart, studying the genus Angricum. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Jordan, for this presentation. This is, I believe, the first Tory online talk. I would have rather met you in person, but this is 2020. Uh, this evening, I'd like, us, I'd like for us to discover the living collection of the Missouri Botanical Garden in Africa and Madagascar. As you can see, this presentation is the result of the work of many people, botanists, engineers, technicians, students, etc. I'm the one presenting this evening, but I'm just a small gear in this machinery. So here are the main subjects we'll explore this evening. First, I'll give a quick introduction on orchids, just a selection of information we should all have in mind to understand our work. Uh, then we will discover what a living collection is about, why do we need one, how does it work, and what do we get from the collection. Uh, we'll tour our living collection in Madagascar, where I'm more involved, the different settings we work in there, and what the living collection can bring to the table of this of scientific knowledge in these specific settings. Finally, I'll touch on a few points that I feel are important about our work and that I would like you to take home. So what is an orchid? Orchid are small to medium sized herbaceous plants. They are part of the market cotyledon clade. How do we rec recognize an orchid? Well, first their flowers are zygomorphic, which means they have a bilateral symmetry. The flowers are made up of three sepals and three petals, of which one is modified in a labellum, as you can see on the left. These, their stamens and carpels are grouped in a characteristic organ, the column, and at the tip of the column, the, pollinate, the pollen is aggregated in pollinia. Uh, that's the yellow masses, you can see. Um, two growth types, sympodial, which is a succession of different apical meristems producing pseudobulbs, or monopodial, uh, which is one primary apical meristem. The word that could characterize best orchids is diversity. Uh, diversity in species with an estimated 27,000 to 28,000 species. Uh, this is one of the largest flowering plant family with Asteraceae, which has around 24,000 to 32,000 uh, plant listed and the Fabaceae family with uh, 19,000 uh, species described. Um, but also diversity of habitats. Orchids are distributed around the world except for polar regions and some deserts. Uh, orchids are present in places where we wouldn't imagine them to occur, like the Maghreb, the Middle East, and Saudi Arabia. Diversity of ecology with uh, terrestrial epiphytic, but not parasitic, or lithophytic orchids. Diversity in pollinators. Um, so they are pollinated by insects, for example, bees, ants, flies, gnats, butterflies, moth, crickets, but also other uh, organisms such, such, such as birds, lizards and humans, if you consider the vanilla pods we have in our kitchens. But how can we tackle this diversity, especially in the urgency caused by habitat and diversity loss? In Central Africa, our observations are that about 70% of the orchid species are epiphytic. That means that they grow on trees and that at any given moment, 90% of the orchids are not flowering. So we cannot identify these all the way down to the species. Historical collections are poorly conserved and more often critical characters for identification are not accessible anymore or destroyed because of the drying process. To make matters worse, because easily accessible forests have already been collected and because of deforestation, the more or less intact forests are now days away from the capital. Obviously, we can't come back to this site every week to see what plant are flowering. 
So there's a need for an efficient and cost-effective procedure to sample the orchid flora of a site. The solution we are implementing is to have a living collection hosted in a shade house. Think of the shade house as the tropical equivalent of a greenhouse. It's a very simple structure, wooden or metallic. It's very cost effective, each shade house costing only a few thousand dollars to build and very cheap to maintain, especially if it's a wooden stru structure. Uh, metallic structures tend to stay up longer without maintenance. Also, because it's a simple DIY structures, uh, we can make old size down to very small shade houses, less than 100 square foot. The Missouri Botanical Gardens Orchid Collection started in 1997 in Sao Tome, a small island off the coast of Cameroon. Uh, three years later, a field guide was published of the orchids from Sao Tome and Principe, the small island nation. Uh, in 2001, the uh, living collection was extended to Gabon where now it hosts a reference collection of the orchids of Gabon in three large shade houses. In 2004, it was then again extended in Cameroon, and in Cameroon, the collection hosted the first orchid seed bank in Africa. Beginning in 2006, the Missouri Botanical Gardens Shade House Network was expanded across continental Africa and Madagascar in collaboration with African and international partners and with the support from the U.S. National Science Foundation. To date, the network currently counts nine large shade houses in five countries, yielding high quality liquid specimens, pictures, and more, free, more recently, leaf tissue for phylogenetic analysis, as well as root tissue for cytological analysis and the study of mycorrhizae. So how does the living collection work? While on the field, we try to collect the most diverse sample of orchids available, and then we bring them back to the shade house to put them into cultivation. Wood support are collected on the field or recycled from dead plants. Epiphytic plants are installed on these wood supports with twist ties as they would grow in nature. There is an up and down orientation for these plants. Um, for especially small plants, we sometimes use sphagnum to help them settle and grow roots. Plants are watered daily for traceability purposes, each plant is assigned a unique identifier to keep track of the information linked to the plants and the samples. Everything from identifier, collector, date, locality, etc. is uploaded to Tropicos, which is the Missouri Botanical Gardens information database. Each plant has its own page. Specimens page are linked to the living plant page from which they were collected. Uh, for Central Africa, we also have an orchid database online with pictures, key, and bibliography relevant to these orchids. To date, more than 32,000 living field collected orchids have been grown, representing more than 500 species, around 280 species in continental Africa and 220 species in Madagascar. And after caring for the plants, well, they flower. In order to obtain high quality samples, flowers and part of the plant are pickled in a mixture of alcohol, water, and glycerol, which is called the spirit collection. Since 1997, more than 24,000 specimens have been collected associated with silica gel preserved mater material, which is dried leaf, and photographs. After it's produced its first specimen, the plant is identified and usually cultivated for four to five years. The specimens they provide are distributed in major collections around the world, with the first specimens staying in the country of origin, ensuring that the information is available to botanists and students locally. More than 500 species have been identified in the shade houses, um, and that's around 20% of the African orchid flora. More than 40 taxonomic novelties have also been identified and described, and more species potentially new to science have been identified and are awaiting publication. So what do we do with this volume of information and specimens? Well, we can work on systematics, the, either the taxonomy, which is describing new species, or the phylogeny, um, which is the relationship between species. With plants easily accessible and with camera traps developed by our team, 
we can also study the reproductive biology of these orchids and specifically identifying their pollinators of which we know very little. With the new distribution data we gather, we can also evaluate the level of threat these species face by assessing them with the IUCN red list categories and criteria. For threatened species, plants are cross-pollinated in the collection, fruits are matured and conserved in our seed banks. Now, let's focus our attention on our activities in Madagascar. Madagascar is a continent, continental island, the fourth largest island, a little bit under 5,087 square kilometers. It's separated from Africa along with India, Australia, and Antarctica 135 million years ago, and then separated from India 88 million years ago. The island has a great variety of bedrock and soil types associated with a wide topographical gradient from sea level up to 2,800 meters elevation. Madagascar also experiences a wide range of climate, both from the tropical east coast receiving heavy precipitation, a temperate, a temperate high plateau region with marked rainy and dry season, and a western and southern region that is in the rain shadow of the plateau and therefore more arid. All these factors permitted the evolution of a particular flora and fauna that are mostly endemic. Um, the endemicity rate for the fauna, fauna is about 90% and 80% for the flora. The problem is that this incredible biodiversity is threatened. Madagascar, despite having many natural resources, is one of the more poorest countries in the world, Pol politically unstable and has lost 44% of its forest cover in the past 60 years. Madagascar is therefore considered a biodiversity hotspot. A thousand orchid species can be found on the island, most of which are endemic. We believe a great number of species have not yet been discovered and described. Because of logging, slash and burn agriculture, but also the local and international horticultural trade, the orchids of Madagascar are particularly threatened. I will now walk you through three different places with different contexts where shade houses are involved. Our first stop takes us to Mbatuvi in the eastern escarpment forest of Madagascar. Mbatuvi is the largest surface mine on the island. They mine nickel and cobalt that is used in different alloys, batteries, automotive industry, etc. It is a long-term project covering a period of 30 years. The Missouri Botanical Garden was contracted to author technical assistance for the impact assessment on the flora and specifically on the orchids. Two shade houses are currently active there. The mining company has five on-site botanists and technicians devoted full-time to the living collection. Because they have to clear the forest to mine the ore, the team gathers plants before and after the trees are felled so that all orchids can potentially be rescued. The plants are then brought to cultivation and after giving enough specimens, with the plant identified and not from a threatened species, they are brought back to the wild in one of the orchid parks surrounding the mine site. These released plants are then monitored to check that they are settling in correctly flowering and producing fruits, a sign that they will be able to come back once the forest is restored. Our work has allowed more than 40,000 plants to be brought to cultivation. These plants have produced more than 3,000 spirit samples, along with more than 6,000 photographs. We then had to identify these samples. That was done in the Paris Herbarium, one of the largest collection of specimens in the world, and the largest largest collection of type specimen for Malagasy orchids. A type specimen is a reference specimen, if you wish, for a specific species, each species having its own type. Um, 283 species were identified in 34 genera. That's a little bit shy of 30% of the island's orchid flora in a relatively small forest. Also, 32 species potentially new to science were identified. Some of them are, have already been described, and the work continues on these Bobophyllum species on the bottom left of your screen. We had to assess if these species were threatened or not, and we did that with the ICN red list categories and criteria that I mentioned before. Um, in a quick analysis, 
175 species were found potentially threatened. And out of these species, we already red listed 90 species. Um, as you can see, 87% of these species were finally found threatened. Um, but bear in mind, this is uh, based on only species that were already found potentially threatened. Only once a species is found to be threatened, we provide the mine site with conservation action plans. So 15 management plans have already been sub submitted. We're working on the rest. There's already an active seed bank in which we uh, are um, conserving uh, the fruits of threatened species for long-term conservation. And we are actually currently doing field work to find new subpopulations of these orchids outside of uh, the uh, mine site. Next up is Antananarivo, the capital of Madagascar. Uh, there we have two shade houses, one at the Missouri Botanical Gardens office, which is a very small shade house you can see on the, uh, the top, uh, top row of pictures. And in also we have a shade house that we co-manage in uh, Timbazaza. Um, Timbazaza is the zoological and floral park uh, in the capital, which is visited daily by uh, by people from Madagascar and tourists. Um, these shade houses allows us to sample orchids from the central plateau, which is a more temperate region, and especially the remnants of high elevation forests uh, that are heavily uh, threatened there. So as you can see, uh, a lot of different species, um, and one of my favorite is the uh, Microcilia guillotini, the, the orange flowers. Action held in Antananarivo helps us doing alpha taxonomy, which is uh, um, identifying species, describing new species. So on the uh, left hand side, you can see small, uh, little small angrycoid species we described uh, based on specimens held in this collection. Um, but also we do ex situ conservation um, with the plants that are cultivated there and also with the newly installed uh, seed bank. So you can see the picture of my colleague um, pollinating a flower, which is a very uh, delicate operation. And finally, our um, shade house in Simbazas can be seen by the visitors takes us to a latest shade house that was built in 2016 in Ambalbe. Ambalbe is a mid-elevation forest in the eastern escarpment, a little bit lower uh, than um, Ambatavi, and it's a newly protected area. Uh, it's co-managed by the Missouri Botanical Garden and the community. In this forest, we have found very interesting species, such as Simbidilla pardalna, uh, Cryptopus paniculatus, like as you can see, but also uh, recently described species like the Bulbophyllum murificum. The community is also involved in the maintenance of the collection, but they also come with us on the field uh, when we go to collect orchids. And this way, um, they have the full picture of what we are doing there, but also what, di what kind of diversity they have in their forest. And this is very interesting. So what are the uh, perspective for our um, collection? So we need to explore, to continue exploring Madagascar's less sampled forests. We also need to develop the shade house networks in coastal forests that are um, heavily uh, threatened and already some have uh, been completely destroyed. And the one that are uh, left are shrinking at you know, uh, very fast. Uh, we also need to assess the threat level of the species housed in the collection. Uh, this is a uh, very tedious work, very long, but uh, it helps us to get um, a more, a clearer picture of what is, what's need to be done in the future for orchid conservation. And talking about orchid conservation, uh, we are, uh, expanding the seed bank slowly with new species and our objective is also to propagate the most threatened species.
I also wanted to talk to you about uh, the team there. So uh, Brigitte Ramondivinsou is the head of the uh, Madagascar Shade House Network. Um, she works on taxonomy, especially the uh, genus Arantis, and uh, in the on the red list assessments. And she's also uh, very involved in the uh, field work. She has just come back from uh, two months on the field collecting orchids. Uh, Mur uh, Razafin Drakutsu, uh, she's a newly uh, a new member of the team. She's a technician and uh, in our Antananarivo and Simbazas shade houses. Uh, she's responsible for the phenological monitoring, so collecting orchids when they flower, and she's also now our pollination expert in Madagascar. Um, other people that I wanted to highlight was were also uh, Marie Savignac, which is uh, which which she is a, a future PhD student. She's based in Yaoundé currently, but she also worked on Malagasy orchids, and she specializes in pollination biology of angraecoid orchids. Uh, Laura Azandi, who is finishing her PhD uh, this year, is based also in Yaoundé, Cameroon, and she's the uh, specialist of a uh, genus of orchids named Sirtorchis. And you can see one of the uh, a still from a, a video she captured. Uh, so she captured a, a sphinx moth uh, visiting her uh, one of her uh, species. Uh, Tanya. Also, last year, PhD student uh, based in Brussels, Belgium. Uh, she works on the systematics and biogeography of Tridactyl, and especially in the islands of Sao Tome and Principe, which I uh, mentioned previously, and where the uh, orchid collection started. Uh, and finally, Juan Farmignon, uh, also a last year PhD student based in Brussels. And um, he deals with the systematics, diversification, and adaptation of angraecoid orchids. Uh, you can uh, see him here uh, very concentrated on the field. So a few take-home messages. Uh, the Shade House Network and the Living Collection are critical tools for the exploration of orchid diversity, uh, the ex situ conservation of its more threatened species, uh, the outreach to local communities and the broader public, and the training of the next generation of botanists uh, working on orchids. Uh, I would like to thank you for attention and all our partners in this uh, huge endeavor. Thank you very much.